Okay, I'm going to go through some things in these uh, images. Uh, this comes from the National Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I'm going to go down here and check the source. And that's exactly what it says down here. The United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So there you go. Um, you know, we've heard reports that the, this thing had spent fuel rods up on the roof, and it shows that right here. Spent fuel rods in the cooling pond up at, on the top here. So you've got this explosion, you know, and they blew, if it blew this top off, you've got... <laughs> So that's what they've been talking about. See, I, when they said it's up on the roof, I, I was picturing it up here, but it's an integral part of the uh, way this thing was designed. So great uh, engineering there. The other thing is we've got 783 rods being housed in the cooling pool at Unit 4. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, stuff there. One of the other things that I noticed when I was just looking through this is if you go over here to the left and you look at this close-up of the tower, check this out. You've got a few rods are right here. You've got your water, okay? Now, one of the concerns is after the further temperature increase, the fuel has heated at the bottom of the pressure vessel and can eventually melt through the reactor base. A worst-case scenario involves a full meltdown when the core melts and fails, falls to the bottom of the reactor's containment vessel. Well, this could result in a large increase in radiation with the extremely serious health effects. Okay, well, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I know that you can boil water at 100, you know, 212 degrees. I also know that... Uh, when you have your pan on the stove and it's 500 degrees and you know you drop some water on it 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 gets it you know it boils away quite rapidly but take a look at these temperatures here okay you know i had that data sheet that showed that they they thought it was partially uncovered well here's the question i've got if this thing's up to over 1000 degrees up here and you've got a little bit of water down there i doubt very much you got any water down there okay you know, who are they trying to kid? I mean, if you've got water boiling away at 212 degrees on your stove, and this thing can go up to temperatures of over 1,000 degrees, okay, why are they trying to fool someone into thinking there's any water in there at all? Okay, because I was looking at some temperatures in here, and uh, where did I find that? It was on this thing. Um Anyway, here's one thing while I, while I look for that. Fuel pellets of uranium dioxide or mixed oxide blend of plutonium and uranium. Wonderful. Okay. I happen to know that plutonium and uranium, one of the two causes bone cancer. Okay. And uh, the question I got, you know, and people are thinking, oh, de minimis. It's small quantities. How many, how many parts per trillion? Let me ask that question. How many parts per trillion do you need to inject into one human cell to cause cancer? Okay, someone give me that data. That's the question I want answered. Where's those gorgeous, you know, centerfold model reporters giving me that information? Come on. You know, you guys are graduates from some prestigious universities. Let's ask some important questions here. Moving on over to the rest of this, let me see if I can see something interesting. Okay, so you got this explosion. Okay, you got this explosion. The water melts. Uh, the water evaporates out. And look at this hole right here: steam to out, out to turbine. So the steam, the stuff all blows. It boils away. It comes out this little hole right here. Okay, and it's sitting down here, and it's molten. Okay, and it's giving off gaseous stuff that's basically a fuel pellet. Okay. And then you got this wonderful statement over here. There are 783 rods being housed in the cooling pool at Unit 4. No word on how many are being housed at the other two reactors. If the fuel rods are exposed to the air, the outer casing will begin to oxidize rapidly, causing the metal to break down, allowing the uranium fuel pellets to be exposed. Okay, I just read some things about Chernobyl. Right now today, what is it, 30, 20, 30 years later... They only allow a worker in there for five minutes. 
They don't allow them to be exposed to work in that area any more than five minutes. So someone, somebody get me the data. How about one of those uh, centerfold-looking news reporters on Fox? Why don't you get me the data on how they're going to go in here and take one of these fuel rods and prevent this thing, what do they call it? The exposed uranium will begin to melt, releasing radioactive isotopes in the air. Why don't you get me the data and answer the question, which worker is going to go in there and pick up one of these things? What, is it, what do you think this thing weighs? It's 180 centimeters, it says right here. Uh, you know, what's the uh, diameter? One centimeter. Okay. 180 centimeters, one centimeter. And what does that weigh? About 20 pounds? Here's another question. Is it even in the shape anymore? I mean, if you've got this oxidized rapidly, look at this statement right here. Cause, the casing will begin to oxidize rapidly, causing the metal to break down, allowing the uranium pellet, fuel pellets to be exposed. Okay? Come on. We've got temperatures of 1,000 degrees. You get 1,000 degrees on the top, pretty good chance that if there's any water down here, it's not there anymore. Okay? That's why they got to keep spraying it. Good luck with that. And how that guy with that fire hose... How long do you think he's going to live standing there holding on to that fire hose? Okay, Chernobyl, again, 30 years later. Half-life of that stuff and uranium, my understanding is something like 30 years. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. Maybe we can get one of those centerfolds on Fox to, uh, you know, get us that data. Okay, because those are the questions, you know, I think are important. So, uh, oh, by the way, let's look over here at this. This is kind of an interesting picture. Look at this. You see this red stuff down there? The worst-case scenario involves a full meltdown when the core melts and falls to the bottom of the reactor's contained vessel. This could result in a large release of radiation with extremely serious health effects. <sighs> Wonderful. Hey, don't get me wrong. You know, I love beautiful women, but, uh, you know, there comes a point when uh, people really need to know the truth. People really need to know information that will save their families. And, uh, how far will we go with, you know, putting advertisers first at the cost and the expense of public safety? Uh, you know, and the information that you're seeing on TV, it's just, it's disgusting. I don't even watch it. I mean, uh, I could do my own research on the internet and get quality information. So, um, this is just amazing to look through this picture. Um, so this entire piece right here blew off when they talk, you know, we saw those explosions, you see them on uh, YouTube. And, uh, so here's our, <laughs> as soon as this thing blew off and they were saying how it was safe, the spent fuel cooling pond is right there. Now you tell me this thing didn't, you know, if this blew off, then that means that this got some damage to it too. And these, these things were exposed to the atmosphere immediately. Okay. And you had, uh, from what some of the people were saying that these things were actually on fire. Okay. So this is right here, the outer containment building destroyed by gas explosion. Yeah. And then, uh, man, there's not much more to say about this. Uh, this is unbelievable. Great engineering. You know, what did the, I bet this guy, what did he graduate from MIT? What professor safety engineer, you know, taught this guy. So you got to go upstream, you know, or, or was this, was this design put in here because they didn't want to spend extra money to do this safer. All right. You know, let the playboy bunny on uh, Fox news ask those questions. You think she's even going to have the mental fortitude to even ask that question? Let's go reverse vector back up to her professor. Why did they graduate that lady? Okay. You know, it's not just the nuclear regulatory commission. Okay. We need more intellectually strong people that are uh, educating us on TV, you know. Um, I, I'm not happy with anybody. I don't, I'm not happy with the people that talk about this. I'm not happy with the people that are going out trying to take air quality samples because what are they really testing for? Oxygen content and they're sucking it into a little vacuum hose. You know, if I was in charge of that, I'd put about a... 12 by 12 uh, thing with a big uh, industrial fan sucking in air, you know, at 10,000 cubic uh, feet per five minute period of time, you know, I mean, I'd be taking some samples, you know, or what are they afraid of catching something? I mean, I've looked at, I've looked at their air intakes on those samples for their parts per million. Are they trying to like not get a sample? So, um, 
you know, it's one thing that we got this disaster, but we just don't have the intellectual strength to even know what to do about it. It's, it's like, you know, uh, I'm ashamed to be a human being, you know, to be in this race, you know, uh, and it, it, and if you if you're not waking up, if this doesn't wake you up to you know getting out there and to try to make a difference and to stop you know just repeating the cliches that you're that you hear on TV, I mean you, you know go back to sleep you know do us all a favor go to a go to a psychiatrist and take some take something for your uh, your la la land you know symptoms okay because. Uh, this this is a machine that um, is extremely destructive to life. You know, look at the Chernobyl. Uh, go out and look at some of the videos on that. And uh, I left those videos of the children of Chernobyl on my site because um, our priorities are really messed up. Okay, um, we are really messed up in the head. Okay. And maybe this thing has just not get, received any coverage and it, it just has been a, you know, a bad sour taste in your mouth to even, you know, go look at the, the, the devastation in Chernobyl. You know, you don't, like, you don't like to look at an abandoned city. It's not fun. You know, it's ugly. You know, you got these abandoned playgrounds and the, the paints peeling off the walls. No one wants to look at that. But I'll tell you what, that's not a nightmare. That's, that's right here on the same planet at the same time that you're alive. I mean, uh, go take a really good look. There's a photographer that did an amazing job and he went in there and take a really hard look at, uh, what, what this is all about, you know? Um, and he's got some maps and those maps are showing a coverage area. That's a lot larger than what you're being shown on, uh, some of these news channels by these experts. Okay. And, uh, Wake up, people. That's all I got.